in penetration testing and very much in red teaming. Often the first challenge to solve is how to get code execution on the inside of an environment so that we can transition from external attacker into internal tester and own all the systems. In today's Tactics Tuesday, we're going to take a look at Dynamic Document Exchange, or DDE, a feature that Microsoft built into many of the programs in the Office suite. In order to gain code execution on the inside of an environment, we'll start by popping calc, and then we'll move on to staging command and control systems with that code execution using Meterpreter, using PowerShell Empire, in order to gain access to systems and then begin to move laterally. So what we have here is essentially the Microsoft suite of tools, everything from Microsoft Word, where DDE was patched, if you will, in December of 2017. Essentially, ransomware users were abusing Microsoft Word a little bit too heavily, and Microsoft was essentially forced to pull part of Microsoft Word's functionality out of the tool itself, that being Dynamic Document Exchange. It's now been disabled in order to protect users just a little bit more. A mistaken takeaway from this that many people have, have brought is that DDE has been patched in general, but it's still quite effective in tools like OneNote, where you can import spreadsheets from tools like Excel, or even Microsoft Outlook. So DDE most certainly is still a thing, even though it's been somewhat disabled in implementations of Microsoft Word. Essentially with DDE, what we're able to do is gain code execution via a cell. So we're gonna take one of these cells and just expand a little bit so we can see a bit close, more closely and type in a formula. And in this case, the formula is actually going to execute code. We're just going to pop calc. In this case, we do get a warning. It says, do we want to start the application cmd.exe? That's a little bit shady. Well, let's just hit yes for now because of course you click yes. All right, there we go. We've got a calculator. Essentially, we've created a document that if opened, the formula within it executes anything that we arbitrarily decide. In this case, it was a, it was a uh, calculator, because of course, calculators are always malicious, but it could alternatively be anything else. We could make this something that stages a remote code execution exploit, or something that stages a payload, like PowerShell Empire, or Metasploit's Meterpreter. Let's take a look at something a little bit more malicious in nature. So in this case, we can use something like Metasploit's script web delivery payload, which is something we used in the last video, but last time we used the PowerShell target in order to use PowerShell to instantiate for us a meterpreter session. In this case, what you can see here is the script web delivery payload, but configured to use regserve32. Now, we can still most certainly, to enable some kind of DDE-based exploitation, use the PowerShell payload. But RegServe32 does create for us some pretty interesting opportunities. So in this case, what we receive here when running it with RegServe32 is a command using the RegServe32 exe that's built into Windows by default to execute something interesting, something magical. Let's combine this with our DDE syntax. So in the case of DDE, what we did before is we used this interesting formula that you can see here. But instead of that cmd.exe syntax that we used after the cmd in order to execute it, we're going to replace that with regserve32 and the execution string that Metasploit provided us. So if we swap our cell out with something like this, and we hit enter, it gives us that same exact questionnaire that we received with the standard DDE payload. Now here's an interesting thing. Instead of cmd.exe here, we say start application msxcel.exe. This seems substantially more legitimate to any target user. What we've essentially done here is we've used Windows to cause Windows to execute an executable in Windows System 32, despite the fact that the first portion fails MS Excel. 
However, the DDE execution isn't aware of this, and it presents the user with something that seems a little bit more legitimate to them, something that may cause them to click yes. If we switch back to our Metasploit instance, we see that we've successfully exploited the target. We can see the stage here being sent across as our payload stages. And we can see here that we now have a session on the target on the window system where this payload was executed. In order to accomplish this, the only thing that's necessary is for us to be able to cause a user, any user, inside an, an internal target environment to open an Excel document and click yes. Now, one other thing that was not visible to us here is that this payload, this Excel spreadsheet, was created by the user already on the system, which means there's no protected view. In OneNote, there isn't any protected view at all, but in Microsoft Office programs, for the most part, protected view would cause another banner to appear here that the user would also need to click Enable Content to. Generally speaking, when I craft a payload of this type, I'll create something the user needs to modify and send back to me. I don't care about what it is that they've made modifications to or whether or not they even send anything back to me. I want them to remove the banner that says protected view. I want them to enable the content and click yes, in this case two clicks, in order to cause my DDE payload to execute. And RegServe32 plus Metasploit's Meterpreter is a pretty awesome opportunity for something like this to happen. Another one that's quite interesting is PowerShell Empire. Now with PowerShell Empire, we've got again a number of different opportunities in order to execute a payload. But one of these is the HTA stager. So if we set up a listener in PowerShell Empire and use the HTA stager, this hypertext ap application, when executed, will also give us code execution on the system. Now we could cause this to happen by simply sending the victim, the target, a link, something like this to Evil HTA. If they open it in an explorer, it'll give them this option. Do you want to open this application? Of course, we click yes and then allow because why not? And that results in a payload for the attacker. And as we can see here, we've now received a new session in our Empire instance. In this case, we've used the Python Simple HTTP server in order to host our evil HTA at port 8000. Then the link that we sent our victim sent them to us on port 8000 here. We can also invoke an HTA in Windows from the command line. This is another built-in tool in Microsoft Windows called MSHTA. Now MSHTA will allow us to run an HTA file from the command line. We hit enter here, and if you noticed, one thing that's interesting about MSHTA is that none of those pop-up windows and errors and warnings showed up. But if we go back to our Empire instance, we can see here Yet another agent has staged, we've gotten access once again. If we combine this syntax, MSHTA, with our DDE payload here, and instead of RegServe32, use MSHTA, we can see here the exact same thing occurs and yet another payload has staged. This is an example of dynamic document exchange used as a client-side vector in order to exploit and gain access to targets on an internal environment. And that's really all there is to it. There's an example here of how to use some built-in Microsoft features, built-in Microsoft tools, in order to get code execution inside our environment, 
and to transition from initial code execution into staging C2 and gaining access to the environment isn't much of a bridge too far beyond that. This of course doesn't take into account any additional work that needs to be done in order to bypass host-based defenses like um, antivirus, though antivirus isn't necessarily too difficult. Most of these techniques may very well work against your antivirus that's built in by default, but say host intrusion protection systems or network-based defenses like proxies that are whitelisting C2 domains. We'll take a look at some of those other features in the future. But for now, here's a quick and easy example on how to use built-in inherent Windows capabilities and tools, things like MSHTA and PowerShell, in order to stage a payload with something like Microsoft Office. Hope this is a good video for you. Happy hacking.